Hey folks, MasterCoX here. It's time to return to the world where Raditz, instead of his brother, got to go to Earth first and live out Goku's life for the most part. And if you're new here, first of all, welcome. And let's just say here in this story that Raditz is more cautious than his brother. But even then, that leads to many problems. In the last part, Kakarot, having a history in tournaments, faces Vegeta, who is now under the control of a lesser being, causing him to become more powerful and dangerous. Their past, filled with complexity and betrayal, remember the whole thing with Mediana Galactic, comes to the forefront during their confrontation, old wounds being torn up. Kakarot tries to reason with Vegeta, pointing out the loss of his own freedom that he clung on to so dearly, as well as his Saiyan pride, being under someone else's control it was wrong. But the prince was unyielding, driven by his past humiliations and a desire for revenge. This battle is not just a physical clash, but also a moral one and an emotional one, reflecting their shared history and the transformations they have undergone in the interim. The fight escalates with Raditz and Kami, who play crucial roles in understanding the dynamics of the battle. Raditz then realizes the mistake that they had made by selling Vegeta to the fighting pits, that only fueling his anger and desire. They really should have just ended him when they had the chance, but their own hubris got in the way. And meanwhile, Vegeta's power has been radically enhanced with magic, posing a significant threat that they didn't expect. The situation becomes more complex with the introduction of Babidi's minions, including Spopovich and Launch, who are then using their fight and gusto to fuel an egg containing Margin Boo. Raditz and others work to counter these threats, underscoring the larger conflict between the fighters and Barbadi's sinister plans, as well as the strategic dimensions of the entire widget, where physical strength is coupled with tactical thinking and timely interventions. Vegeta, in his fury and desperation, leaves the tournament to assist his ally, whom Raditz decided to give a little bit of a flying lesson. But Barbadi is unfazed by the loss of the energy device after Shin destroys it, and he continues his plan to reanimate Majin Buu through other means, being resourceful and using any sort of depths of his evil schemes. The episode ended on a cliffhanger with Raditz confronting Deborah, Barbadi's most powerful minion, at least at the time, setting the stage for this next chapter in the saga, which is where we shall resume. The explosion rocked the stadium, sending people scurrying for the exits as fast as their little legs would carry them. Despite the blast being hundreds of feet in the air, it was that powerful. The allies on the ground could sense that Kakarot was still alive. Okay, that was good. But he had been wounded considerably. Sure enough, this was confirmed when Kakarot indeed fell to the ground, right in the middle of the arena. He was smouldering, bruised, covered in scuff marks and cuts, and out cold. But he was breathing. Just. Chi Chi ran over to her husband, as did Kyaro and Bulla. Luckily, they had some sensu beans to hand in case some of the fighting got a little bit heavy handed, so their elder's suffering would be fleeting. Kakarot took the bean and swallowed, slowly coming to. Chi Chi thoroughly relieved that the beans hadn't let them down, that they were still effective. They had the grounds to themselves since the stadium was now practically deserted. Kakarot got up and looked around, trying to get his bearings. Then he remembered why he had needed the bean. He looked very harrowed. It wasn't her fault. She was controlled by something. The same thing that got Vegeta. Bulma looked torn. Sure, Launch had been a pest over the years for getting in the middle of her and Raditz, but she did not deserve to die like that, as some kind of wanton accessory to a wizard's grand scheme. It degraded her, even in death. What are we going to do, Kakarot? said Bulma, trying her best to remain calm for herself and the kids' sake. Can't we just kill Vegeta? Kakarot looked up at her with a very sour expression. I'd rather not be associated with any more death after what I just saw. But he looked back to the ground and then to his fist. 
This was probably going to happen sooner or later. We should have sent him to the other one when we had the chance. Now Mota is... He immediately got up, wiping a tear away at the loss of his dear friend. Having sensed his brother's key getting into an almighty scuffle miles away. Raditz! Vegeta must have gotten to him! I gotta go! Without another word, Kakarot rushed off to the scene, leaving the rest behind and needing a considerable amount of time to himself to process what had just happened. That wasn't going to go away, Liggety Split. Bulma then looked to Kyaro and then Bulla, giving them a very stern gaze. She knew what they were thinking. Don't you get any ideas? This is way above your pay grade! The pair looked incredibly dejected. That had been their intention. But the parents had beaten them to the punch. Ah, oh, rats, said Bulla, tucking her fingers frustratedly. The battle between Raditz and Deborah commenced, Raditz immediately powering up to Super Saiyan 2, not keen to drag out this fight any longer. After all, he could sense Vegeta approaching, with Spopovich still in his one hand. He used the other hand to defend himself whilst whipping around comedically the unconscious minion like he was some kind of, well, whip. Deborah was incredibly confused with this brazen act of madness to use a human being as some kind of shield or weapon. But then he started to laugh maniacally. <laughs> Your attempts to confuse me shall not work, Tin. You using that kind of thing, that's what my minions would do. I shall overcome this little inconvenience. Raditz didn't respond. He just kept using the mook as a defensive tactic, and it was enough to keep the king of the demons distracted and mildly amused. Deborah was finding this all too hilarious to take seriously, and had never seen anything like this in the real world in all of his millennia of being the monarch of the underworld. However, the novelty began to quickly fade away, and yet Raditz was still carrying on this joke, fighting with a giant human as some kind of toy. The penny dropped. <sighs> Enough! Deborah grabbed the other leg of the unconscious Popovich, and Raditz put up little resistance. We have no use for this thing. <sighs> he chucked the minion into the air and blasted him into pieces. Deborah then smiled, the nuisance gone. <laughs> Just like the other ones. Other ones? What do you mean, other ones? Well, there's the girl for a start. I believe you met them a long time ago. An acquaintance. She remembered you. Very much remembered you. And a bone to pick. But I guess you don't have to worry about that anymore. Radice's eyes widened. Large. Names do not matter where she has gone. Raditz was left reeling from this news. Of all the dirty, rotten tricks. How dare you bring her into this? You'll pay! Raditz was fired up. This anger was something that took Deborah immensely aback. He had no idea that Raditz had had, had feelings for this woman. Well, he hadn't, but he still felt her death was incredibly unjust. With a roar of power and a flurry of blows, Deborah was now clearly on the defensive. The demon hadn't seen this level of firepower before from the Saiyan, and he thought that he had been going all out, that this was just a means to distract and stall. But it turned out that he had had another gear after all, and he had yet to change into it. He had now. Raditz was going hell for leather against the Demon King, and Deborah was struggling to keep up. Meanwhile, back in the cavern of the spaceship below, Arvidi was smiling. He could sense the gauge on the ball's container behind him going up bit by bit. Yes, it had fallen back a little bit from the loss of the device, but it was soon becoming clear that this Saiyan possessed an incredible amount of power, and it was more than enough to gradually make up for the lost energy that he had acquired previously. Yes, you stupid monkeys! Feed Margin Boo for me! Meanwhile, Kakarot was speeding toward the battle when he got the word from the Supreme Kai via telepathy about Barbadi's intentions. Kakarot, can you hear me? Yes, what is it? You need to stop the fight with your brother and Deborah. He is being played! The longer he fights the demon, the more that Majin Buu will feed upon the energy emitted. How can you be so sure? 
said Kakarot, irritated in his own mind. I... I feel this was all too easy. Us destroying the device. Whatever you do, don't get involved in the fight unless I can finish it. Kakarot powered up to Super Saiyan 2, speeding up incredibly. Shin cursed Kakarot when the connection between the two of them had been severed. <laughs> Goddamn Morty's. Fortunately, the elder brother was doing his job and was about to finish the Bura off when suddenly the other Saiyan came into view, sending Raditz into a tailspin. Vegeta was staring at the scene with contempt, him looking around, seeing no sign of the minion that he was trying to chase after. You see? This is why you should never send a demon to do a Saiyan's job. Debora, now flustered beyond belief and on the brink of passing out, cursed at Vegeta's presence. What does it matter? Our plan has failed. Seems very dull for a demon to say things like that, said Vegeta, loving the defeated nature of Debora. This was pure catharsis. How about I put you out of your misery? Him thrusting his hand in front of the weakened Debora. Raditz completely left out of the picture. Uh, okay? Uh, what? Uh, no! Vegeta! You can't! Barbody would never- I would never what? Barbody's voice echoed throughout all three minds present. Master. Master Barbody. You have done well for me, Deborah, over these years. We are much closer to our goal thanks to your brave efforts. Raditz could sense the sarcasm in those words. But I feel now that your service is clearly no longer required. What? But uh, you I, uh, I'm the king of the demons. You can't possibly. Where has that got to? Hmm? Compromised by a hairy monkey. Raditz was about to say something to counter that, but maybe now wasn't the time for banter, especially with a wizard in your brain. Deborah could feel what he was about to experience, his body beginning to twitch and vibrate. He knew what was going to happen. He did not want to suffer like that, not that fate, not like all those who had gone before whilst he had been serving under Barbady. He had no choice. He let out a roar, powering up with all of his strength, whatever control he had left, burning himself out rather than face the indignity of what had happened to launch previously. He placed his hand on his chest, both of them, and fired two beams straight through. He felt no pain. Raditz and Vegeta were left horrified at the suddenness of it all. What kind of maniac could intimidate the king of all that is evil in the universe into doing that? As Deborah's motionless body crashed into the ground below, Vegeta was left genuinely staggered. That could happen to him if he wasn't careful, if he had failed. Had he made a deal with the real devil in Barbary? Had the true extent of Barbary's influence not been laid bare to him before? I know, Vegeta, a little graphic, but I know you won't disappoint me. Now, I believe you have a bone to pick with that creature over there. Finish him off there, won't you? Vegeta then snapped out of his funk. No, he wasn't as bad as Tabura. He turned to face Raditz with pleasure. But before he could start the onslaught, Kakarot arrived on the scene, placing himself next to his brother in solidarity. Raditz, are you okay? Raditz then turned to his brother. About to be expected. What about you? Kakarot handed him a bean, which he consumed, restoring his stamina instantly. I'd rather not talk about it, said Kakarot, looking quite haggard about the thought. I think I can guess. Launch, right? How did you know? King Grunt down there told me. So much for the King of the Demons. Kakarot was left very confused about what he was talking about, but the situation right now was much easier to understand. The last obstacle in their midst to end the possible tyranny of Majin Buu from forcing itself on the world. It was staring right back at them. Vegeta, who looked incredibly vicious right now. But then Kakarot remembered what Shin had said to him. Don't fight Vegeta. This was going to be tricky. Considering that the prince had no intention of doing anything else but fight them. So, they had no choice. I guess we should have killed you after offing the king, eh? 
said Kakarot. Believe me, that would have done us all a favor. What you put me through was nothing but the most abject degradation I have ever experienced in my entire life, in my days on this mortal coil. If you had killed me, you would have been spared the wrath that I'm about to inflict upon this planet. And first of all, you. He was pointing at Kakra while saying this. Raditz knew this was going to go nowhere, and so he used his newly discovered power to great effect and began the battle, Kakarot following in hot pursuit. Together, they duted out against Vegeta, whose power had shot up incredibly far since the last time they had seen him. How did he get so strong whilst being locked up as a plaything of Mediani Galactic? Clearly, he had festered so hard that he had only focused on getting his own back against the Saiyans one day, who had betrayed their kind, leaving their own prince to rot for the show. The prince was only getting started. And that's where we're going to be leaving things for right now.